Five Warriors. Hope everyone had a good holiday. Anyone out there miss me? Give me a why if you miss me. Hi, <laughs> Dragmar, Luca, Kevin. Let's kill it this week. Isaiah. So I have an announcement. Cyber Monday, Cyber Monday. For those of you who haven't joined, it's your lucky day. Buy a month, get two. Buy a month, get two. It's only good for 24 hours. We too can be like Amazon. We're the Amazon, <laughs> we're the Amazon of the FX world. So if you haven't signed up, good time to do it. It's like a 50% off sale. No, it's a hundred percent off. Anyway, I can't do the math. So the link is right there to join and it's a Cyber Monday offer. Let's see what the team is doing pick wise. There's a couple left. Uh, Grega, last week I thought the dollar was going to sell off before we left for the long holiday weekend. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I have a little different view now. If you're short Euro pound, I'll show you why. And let's take a look at the markets. So looking at the pound last week, uh, we took out this formation here. Uh, Steve will probably say this is still not impulsive, that it's grinding, grinding, grinding. I'd say that most of the shorts are out with taking out uh, 133.80. Was this the high here? 133.80. So we haven't, we should have done that. Yeah, 133.80. And today's high so far. So we haven't quite done it. On my chart, it sure looks like we have. So anyway, uh, I would say the first sign that there's something wrong with this breakout would be, of course, closing back underneath it. Um, 240 is a big number for me, so we'll see. It's hard to want to fade uh, dollar weakness here, especially against the euro. So the pound uh, may be the better choice, and here's why. Euro pound dug in its heels last week and started heading back up. I still think that there's a chance, even though we might get a pullback here, that we're going to I've been saying this from down here, here. When I said we take out the 89.40, we did. Then we got the pullback. Uh, I still think there's a chance, especially if the euro is going to where I think it will, uh, that the euro could lead and head back up and clean out all the bears in euro pound. There are stops here, and the grand prize are stops here. Head up to 91, 91.50. These are just my views, my opinions. Everyone with me on that? So we'll see how this works out the rest of the week. But uh, if you want to be short and you're still with Nick's count, this is a great shorting opportunity with stops over this high. Only a couple of pips. I uh, want to congratulate Blake. His USD note trade short worked out great. I think he took it on Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving. And I want to talk about uh, a couple of the yen crosses. I think it's interesting. That was something else Forex Analytics was really on top of. We're probably getting a little closer to something happening here. Let's see if we're starting to diverge at all in the end. Yeah, we're starting to get a little divergence here. You know, 110 and a half was the target, 111, 110 and a half. I'd be pretty careful being short US dollar yen here. I'm not saying today is the day that it's going to turn, but look at the four hour, it's pretty glaring. And what's interesting is Euro yen. Uh, last week we were talking about before it launched again, that it keeps pushing at support. And here they cleaned out. They didn't really even clean out stops because the stops would have been under this low. But 
take a look at this. This rally had a lot of a lot of gumption. It approached it went to the 78.6 level before it sold off to the floor, major support. This time only 61.8. So the rallies are getting weaker. Uh, there might be a short here against 61.8. And next time, I think we're going to break down. We're going to get through it. So I think it might be more of a continuation in the end or a pullback. So we'll see what happens here on, on this uh, euro yen, pound yen also looks weak. We, we're not making, we're, we bounce, but we're making lower highs. We're making lower highs. I still think we're going to at least challenge 47 here on this. Uh, something I missed last week that was really, you take a picture and it was at the high of uh, Canada. You had a one, two, three before this, but we never got back towards uh, levels that uh, we thought, uh, the team thought we could get to, Greg, of maybe 131. So maybe rallies back to seven and a half, get some type of ABC here. A, B, and maybe a C. But the big news of the day is the two for one. Not eager to sell. I, I think we're going above 120. Uh, I think that's uh, really the reason why EG can get to the targets, Madras, that I'm talking about. Okay, so you with me on that, everybody? So I use EG to, for trade selection. You know, you guys have heard me talk about American Idol and a singer's most critical choice is song choice. For us, it's trade selection. And having a bias or uh, knowing the direction, whether you trade EG or not, tells you what which of the two you should be looking to buy on weakness and which one you should be looking to sell on strength. So with my view on EG, if I'm right and we're heading above Heading back towards 91, you want to buy weakness in euro and you want to sell strength in cable. Give me a why if you get it. It's a very important pair for trade selection because you could be right about dollar direction, choose the wrong pair and not capitalize on being right, which is one of the most aggravating things to do in the market is you have direction of the dollar right but you've chosen the wrong instrument to take advantage of it. So even if you don't trade EG, it should be something that's always on your radar screen if you're a Euro USD or a cable trader. And I rest my case. So let's see. Oh, Blake, oh, we just got something six minutes ago from Blake on pound. Okay. So he's looking to get short in this area. He's looking for 31. You know, great minds think alike. Here's Blake's look on it, right back to resistance here. It's kind of looking like a flag. Don't fade Blake Morrow. And with that being said, you could have this at your fingertips for the next two months, just buying one month. And there are different levels, so you'll have Blake's stuff at your fingertips. You don't have to wait for me to be a generous human being and share it with you. You could wake up at 2 in the morning and uh, have an idea. As I've explained in the past, I always screen markets and take my views and what I'm seeing and then do my intelligence gathering by taking a look at what all the team members are saying based upon their different disciplines. So here's Grega. Grega still thinks there's a chance for a failure here, right here, and that we're headed down. So there is a lot of agreement here. We're good or bad in the pound from this uh, resistance area. It lines up with my analysis of EG. And most importantly of all, invest in your future trading performance and get a deal today. Two months for one. So, is my teammate Nostravolgi here? I, I hope you're feeling better, Steve. I was re reading on our Skype chat that you weren't feeling well. I hope you've recovered. What was it, the Greek flu? Or is Blake on deck here? 
Uh, I'm definitely here. Good morning. Hi, it's Steve. How are you, buddy? I'm better. <laughs> what was it? Flu? Uh, yeah, it, it, it is a, it is a, one one of the, of the many. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. My well, toddler caught it first, then my wife, and I was the last one. Okay. Well, now the family's through it, and you can enjoy Christmas. <laughs> You never know until Christmas. You know, we, have, we have the opportunity of catching another one. I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, I you know I don't know about you. Some of Vincent left, but he was asking about uh, Euro Aussie. Um, I think that we're close to at least a reaction high on that. But I'll be interested in hearing what you're saying about this. I remember last week when we were talking about the Euro um, that I didn't think we'd get back to. Uh, the false breakdown that wouldn't accommodate people and looks like that's what happened and never got back there before it took off. No, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it, it rarely does uh, in, in these cases, you know what I mean? After it stalled, uh, you know, it was more than obvious that, you know, hoping for that uh was just hoping because you know how it is it would it would have been too much accommodative as you said yeah. yourself and <laughs> usually not uh, easy the market rarely is yeah indeed okay all right well uh you want me to pass you the screen or you want to grab yeah, it sure absolutely i can start and blake is going to join us okay in around 20 minutes so from now. uh did i pound pound home the uh, cyber monday special Enough for now. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Is there something on the website that shows that they'll get two for one when they go there? Yeah, there is uh, there is a visual indication, and you know, in the plan list, uh, okay. you know, just for today, the monthly plan has been uh, uh, has been replaced by the Cyber Monday uh, offer. It's just a 24-hour right. Cyber Monday right. offer that has to do with the monthly plan. You. You 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 pay for one month and you get you know one month extra. So in essence, there you it get is. two months at fifty percent. Yeah. Okay, so better to have a twenty-four hour special than the twenty-four hour flu. Uh yeah, if okay. only it was twenty-four hour flu. <laughs> <laughs> one could help you pay for the doctor. All right, so. <laughs> What are you thinking here, bro, going into a complete week? I know that usually this time of year, you know, people are starting to wrap it up for the year and uh, they're looking at their yearly P&Ls and they're just trying to hold their ground if they're having a good year. Yeah, and although then, that's mostly the case with uh, uh, with stocks and, right. and not so much with effects. Okay. I mean... Yeah, of course, you know, uh, institutional traders do also have like targets and right. they have a book, et cetera, et cetera. There's no question about it. But as you know, uh, you know, FX is, uh, you know, by, by default and uh, uh, due to its function is a market that's, you know, especially liquid all year long. Yes, but, but don't try and make up for your whole year in the next 30 days. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of people do it. Well, you know, I want to get, you know, but uh, up 10% or break even. Don't press because of a calendar is my advice. Usually pressing because of any reason, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, that rarely brings uh, results. I mean, you should be pressing when the markets tell you to press. that. Yeah, that you should press because, you know, you have a very clear indication of uh, what's happening because you have let's say very nice trending markets so that that's when you should press and you know it's well us dollar yen was certainly one for us and blake and uh, you know i mean that it was a nice trender it, you know definitely definitely and i have to tell you that uh, yesterday night uh, my, my night i mean european night uh, after the open it, it gave people the, the opportunity to join it and it gave an excellent opportunity uh for, for people to join it um because it uh it retested um the 112 zone um let me show you okay i just gave you the uh, yeah, yeah i'm going to show you now um i wrote that in the analysis the weekend analysis as well that 
you know, this this zone, this 112 zone, which is, you know, in general, this 111.50 to 112 zone, um, uh, we actually had that rebound, uh, you know, while on holidays. Uh, and, you know, I, I specifically wrote that, uh, you know, that, that, that should not uh, trouble or change the view of uh, the USD yen moving lower, uh, simply because this should be considered like a retest of uh, this zone. And as you see, we came back in the middle of the zone, we retested the 200 daily moving average, like right, uh, right to, the, you know, to the pip. And that's it. We, we, we are once again uh, at uh, new lows. So, you know, that, that was already like a 70 pip uh, gift that we often see when the market opens. Uh, you, you often see when the market opens, uh, you know, on a Sunday night, um, counter trend moves that last for a few hours or little gaps higher or lower. Uh, and, you know, then the market resumes what, what it wants to resume. So uh, I really do think that, uh, you know, USD yen is not done uh, pressing to the downside. And, uh, you know, the next target now is probably the 110 level, which is also the 61.8 of the last move uh, higher. So as long as that area holds, I think there is, you know, nothing to discuss and no reason to to be looking to uh, to, to trade another reversal higher, uh, at least not yet. And in general, uh, you know, because we had talked about it over and over again, uh, having to do with the US dollar, uh, obviously, you know, we, we got rejected twice from uh, roughly the 95 area. Uh, we said that, you know, 94.20 is, is the important area. We broke below it. We came back. We retested it. So we confirmed once again the importance of the 94.20 level. And after doing that, we accelerated lower. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, dollar also gave us all the indications we, we, we could have wanted that it really does not intend to uh, resume its correction higher. We, you know, we were always adamant about the fact that we're viewing the move higher as a correction. We were hoping that this correction would extend to perhaps 95.90, which was a 38.2, potentially uh, even towards the 97 area. Uh, but, you know, once we got rejected from there, then we penetrated through this ascending trend line. Then uh, also, you know, the same day uh, through the 94.20 level. And then while we came back and retested that level, like, uh, you know, a few days later, I think, you know, uh, you, you can't expect for more indications than that, that, uh, you know, uh, the, the DXY was not going to recover uh, once again, so uh, a push to new lows is uh, a very, very high probability after that happened. Okay, and uh, you know it, it, rem it remains as a fact, which means that uh, you know people should be careful uh, with uh, being uh, along the US dollar. Still, the US dollar is not performing equivalently across all currency pairs. So, for example, the uh, Aussie and the Kiwi. Uh, remain weaker uh, in comparison to other pairs, but that doesn't mean that they cannot also mount like a larger recovery than they have uh, done so far. So, for example, this is what I'm monitoring in the Aussie USD, and I'm starting from here because, you know, this has been one of the pairs that the USD has been overperforming and has done, you know, particularly well uh, during the uh, period that it has been rebounding. Uh, but as we see, we are testing now uh, a confluence of uh, resistances because it's, you know, the lows we had like a few weeks back at uh, 76.40. It's also a descending channel that I was monitoring. Um, so uh, I think that the break above there should confirm a continuation of the rebound to at least, at the very least, towards the 77.40 area. So for at least another 100 pips, okay, at least. If you remember, 
we were very clear that we were, uh, you know, we would remain bearish as long as the 7740 area uh, held, but that was like several weeks ago, and we were expecting a rejection from there and the push to new lows. That's exactly what happened. We didn't perfectly reach the target. My my target back then was the 75 area. We came decently close to that. We came to 75.35, so we came 35 pips from there. But I think that satisfies more than enough, uh, you know, the posting news lows I was looking for. So I really don't have anything against the bigger rebound here. Um, as I said, probably we're going to confirm that today or, uh, you know, in the rest of the week. Um, more or less the same thing um, happened. Um, are we, Dale, are you here? Are we still broadcasting? I can hear you, Steve. Uh, did you take the screen, Blake? I'm What's that? My audio. I'm having trouble with my audio. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Uh, is that your AOL mail? I think you took the screen yeah, from me. That's mine. Okay. Go ahead. Take it back. It, it was asking me to put new hardware on my sound, so just uh, probably to make sure that we probably there. you unplugged. Yeah, probably you unplugged. Uh, perhaps your headset momentarily, yeah. or it stopped. Okay, uh, I, we can hear you, Dale. Um, uh, good morning, Blake. By the way. Hey, good morning, Steve. How are you doing? I'm better. Slowly getting better. Good, good. It sounds like you're getting better. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, so the same thing applies with the Kiwi. Uh, we pushed to new high, to, to new lows. Um, somebody can view this also as a false break lower because you know we we double bottom, let's say, uh, some weeks ago, uh, exactly at this area, the 68.20 area. We then pressed higher. We were looking for this rebound to fail, it did. We were looking for a push to new lows, but that push to new lows was barely to new lows, and we're rebounding once again. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure that the 69.70 area is going to hold for a second time. It, it should definitely provide some kind of a reaction, but I'm, I'm also not sure that this is going to, uh, you know, to to stop the rebound. So I'm not really sure how, how far the Kiwi can rebound from here. It also depend, depends on the dollar, but I'm guessing that this time the rebound can be um, stronger. I would guess we could even rebound back to the 7, 7, 0, 70, 50 area, which is that low, perhaps even higher from there to the 200 DMA. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm also looking for these pairs to do some kind of catching up. Um, they remain weak, but obviously this is not the point that you would want to be pressing with uh, with shorts. Now, having to do with other pairs against the dollar, we've already seen. Dale spoke about it. Um, we've already seen the the very strong reaction from the euro. Uh, the euro got an initial rejection from 180. 118, uh, the 118.50 area, which is the, in essence, the 118.50 to 118.70 area. Usually, important areas uh, do provide reactions even if they are short term. So, this area was an area of interest. Uh, even when, when we were moving higher, it had provided an initial resistance. Then it acted as support. Then it acted again as resistance. Now it acted again as, as resistance, but you know, that uh, move lower was obviously not an impulsive one. It, it was it was clearly a corrective one. And the secondary test of that area didn't have much chances of holding as it didn't. So I have no reason to believe that this area is not going to act as support from this point on, which means that, you know, the euro did exactly what we thought there. I said that ideally, ideally, you would want it to, to go down to 116.80, never did so. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that from this point on, any uh, retest back down at this area, the 118.50 to 118.70 area, um, should provide support. Um, so, you know, 
you know what to look for. I'm pretty sure that people will be buying when it comes down there. And as I said about the USD yen, the opposite applies to the Euro USD. I'm guessing that uh, a push to new highs uh, from here is extremely um, likely, uh, simply because um, the trend was higher. There's no question about it. Uh, we had a corrective move lower, which corrected mostly in time and you know not in distance having to do with price and probably a push to new highs and if we want to see specific levels of where we would be looking for uh, why not even to the 61.8 which is at, at one um dale uh, you sound a little bit too far okay i know there's issues so uh greg's pattern in play definitely caught it oh yeah yeah definitely Definitely. Um, so uh, I, I don't know what a push to new highs would mean. Uh, could mean uh, somewhere at 124 or all the way to 126, which is the 61.8 of the whole move lower that started, uh, you know, from uh, May uh, 2014. But definitely a push to new highs is extremely likely. Okay, so. In my opinion, people should not be looking to fade uh, this uh, fresh uh, move higher and uh, the euro strength uh, for any reason. Uh, I think it's extremely dangerous to try to fade it. I, I, I'm not talking about scalpers, of course. I know that they, they constantly, constantly keep finding levels to trade any instrument, you know, one way or the other. Uh, but I, 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 I'm pretty much sure that if you're talking about medium term, you don't want to fade this here. Now, having to do with the cable, I'm pretty sure that Blake is going to show you this once again because he has shown this trend line, you know, plenty of times. This long-term descending trend line that passes from there as well. Um, we also have the 61.8 of this move lower uh, that comes in at 134.17, so that's 50 pips higher. So there are areas of interest uh, there. Uh, actually, this is a quite nice confluence at 134.20. Now, I know that he uh, opened the pattern in play uh, being short. I'm sure that he's watching for more levels than these two uh, at the moment. So I'm not going to go into the, into the uh, pound USD. I'm going to let him, um, you know, cover it in five minutes from now, uh, you know, and tell us exactly uh, whatever else he, he's seeing that makes him want to be short um at current juncture um okay i know that we have questions uh let me see euro Aussie. okay let me have a look at the euro Aussie. um let me see if there was something else i wanted to talk about um yeah usd knock by the way i remain short um uh, it's it's been a good trade i also remain short the nikki which obviously is also showing weakness overnight uh it, it it actually seems to have found strong resistance at this uh, 22650 area because if you see on a daily closing basis we have been rejected uh from that area multiple times it's uh, today is the fifth day during the past like seven eight days um so there is a good chance that from this area a new leg lower is going going to uh uh, to begin, um, I'm only holding one third of my position because I, you know, I, I reinitiated. I had said so here. Uh, another third, um, so I increased my position back to two thirds back then. But I took profits for 300 uh, handles, so now I remain with one third of my position. There is a good chance I'm gonna I'm gonna increase it to two thirds again on a break below 22,300, uh, and I will be looking for a push to uh, new highs and to new lows and when I say new lows I mean lower than the low we had there uh, probably towards the 50% fib um, for this corrective move lower to to finish but I don't think that you know the correction lower in the NK is complete and that's also uh, one of the reasons I don't think that the move lower to the USD yen uh, is complete I remain also short USD knock. I, I took profits on 50% of my position. I also took 
a small loss to my um i had i had taken a, a short um actually here i was on the webinar um i wanted to test this triangle if it would hold so i had taken short uh, below 133 with uh 133 uh, 10 being my stop loss that got triggered so i got a, uh, i got stopped out for like half percent of loss there because i had another ha uh, half position from 131.30 uh, since a long time ago um, so that's a fast update to what I have been doing and let me have a look at the euros and then I can pass it over to Blake uh, he, he will take uh, care of the rest of the questions that are coming through okay having to do with the euros two things I have to say here and I have been repeating them for plenty you know of days weeks actually first of all the sequence of higher lows has never uh, given up. So um, every move we've had since February of this year has been corrective. And the sequence of higher lows uh, is, is still resuming. And that makes me uh, believe that in the medium term, I have absolutely no reason to be looking to be short. Now, on the other hand, I have here a 161.8% extension that we almost reached from this corrective move lower there, which would make me, you know, more cautious. I mean, I would obviously not be buying the pair up up there. We said when we were, were moving lower from there that this would perhaps be an opportunity to be buying, but I don't think I would be advising anybody to buy up here. But do I have confirmation that it's rolling over and going lower? No, absolutely not yet. Why would I? As I said, the sequence of higher lows is still resuming and it remains quite strong. So, you know, not much to say about that. Let's have a look at the Euro Kiwi as well. Euro Kiwi is cleaner from a technical perspective because uh, so far today it's giving us another rejection from this ascending channel and somebody could even view this as a potential of course because we don't have confirmation yet as a double top up there uh, so if you want to be short sure the reward to risk is here but the same thing applies here the sequence of higher lows and even higher highs has not yet, yet been broken so if you want to do that you know the good the good aspect is that you know exactly where your risk is the bad thing is that you still have no confirmation about this trade okay so you should be very nimble and be fully fully conscious that if you if you're to take the trade first of all it's counter trend second of all you know you shouldn't press on it so if if it fails and it breaks above the previous highs you know you just take your loss which is a high probability chance of taking you know a small loss and that's it otherwise you know if if you get lucky and you catch a double top there you can even see it move down once again to the 167 area but as i said it's very premature if you know jumping the gun is your type of trading people i know people that do it you know uh, successfully then go ahead but you know it's not my type of trading usually Okay, Blaker, uh, you have some more questions, but I'm sure that you first want to show the cable and other things you, you've been looking for. Um, so if you're here, I'm going to hand it over to you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here, Steve. Um, so what predominantly have you been looking at? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a look at, uh, you know, some of the majors here, but what, what have you been basically uh, we we we, we had a look of uh, at uh, the euro usd we had a look at the dxy uh spoke briefly about the cable because i said that you, you're going to talk about it uh the aussie and the kiwi uh saying that perhaps they're also making an effort to reverse uh, especially the aussie is is currently testing a uh, you know a very interesting confluence of resistances um but roughly, I think that's what I covered, and the Nikkei uh, here near the end. Got it. Okay. Um, sounds good, Steve. So thanks for your analysis, and uh, and I'm glad to hear that you're feeling a little better. I know you you've uh, tried to take it easy the last few days. Hopefully, your your whole household yeah, the, has been uh, been yeah, underwater. The, the or under the weather. 
yeah, the yeah, it has been. Um, and you know, the the holidays, you know, gave us this opportunity at least. So, you know, it was you know, <laughs> it was a good timing. Yeah, I guess. You know, and hey, the good news is, is once your once your family has uh, gotten past it, um, you know, hopefully. Yeah, it was the last one. So we got it. <laughs> you, you, yeah, and it's funny because you, 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 uh, you actually told me like I came away unscathed, and then boom. The <laughs> yeah, 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 actually, I, it was the same night that they started feeling. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right, it eventually caught up to you. So it, you can, it, you know, a lot of times I can, I can escape. Uh, the wrath of whatever's going around my house, but uh, but sometimes you just you can't do it. You know, you get especially when you got a, a, a young one um, that constantly is sneezing uh, in your face or you know um, you know putting their fingers all over your whatever you're you know grabbing and it's tough. It's Indeed. tough to avoid. Indeed. Well, um, well, Steve, thank thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll probably revisit some of these um, uh, because you know we've seen. We've seen some pretty massive dollar moves, and and uh, and like I said, I'm going to revisit a lot of these right now. But uh, but th thank you for your analysis, uh, and I'll, and I'll oh, I'm going to cover a few. By, things. by the way, Blake, uh, so I don't forget, um, uh, we have now, and you know, it, it's an in, it's an important announcement that we haven't made because we also had some uh, little technical difficulties that we wanted to bypass. We have now uh, given. We we are happy to, sh to to announce that we have now given. We're giving access to our chat room to anybody that joins Forex Analytics, even if they're in a trial. But uh, the same restrictions that applied before uh, now apply for people, um, but not for them to have access or not, but to be able to type in or not. So people that uh, join in uh, even for a trial or to any plan. Um, will have access to the chat room, but they won't be able to type un unless or until they complete uh, six months being with the company or unless they get a, a semi-annual or an annual plan. But they will Correct. at least be able to view uh, the chat room. So that, that's, that's a great um, comment, and so I'll, I'll expand on that. So first of all, uh, we have a Black Friday sale today. It's just today. It was a last minute, uh, or not Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So, sorry, uh, it's just for 24 hours, um, and and so if you were thinking about um, trying Forex Analytics, uh, this is your time. This is your time to do it. Um, so what Steve is saying is that you can view the chat room. Uh, all you have to do is click on this wheel bar, uh, wheel setting. Uh, excuse me, um, for when you're when you're logged in, and it's and it, it allows you to go to the chat room. If you do not meet the requirements of uh, being a client for six months or you don't have a semi-annual or annual subscription you're only going to be able to view is that correct steve absolutely Blake. yes okay okay and then once once you you have hit the requirement then you're, you'll be able to actually participate meaning you'll be able to chat in the chat room um correct we have uh we we have right now as you can see we have 76 people that are logged in currently um that that number that number goes up and down throughout the course of the day and um and the yes you're on jumbotron if if you ever watch sporting events and they put the uh, people on uh, on the big screen, this is uh, you guys are on jumbotron right now, and <laughs> thanks Ziggy, thank you very much. <laughs> That's why I'm going to go ahead and take you guys off jumbotron for now. Um, but but uh, the it's 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 a great it's a great community that we have, uh, and and uh, oh here I'll, the, these guys are all still chatting, so uh, it's a great community that we have. But just remember, unless you have an annual or a semi-annual subscription, or you've been month to month for six months, then you'll be able to uh, chat. But you can you can see what everybody's doing in here, uh, which is nice. Um, okay, so and and remember, if you have uh, if you were thinking about trying Forex Analytics, this is your time. You know, you 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 buy one month, you get one month free, and it is our uh, Cyber Monday uh, deal. It is only 24 hours. We are not extending it. So just uh, just letting you guys know. All right, now uh, let's talk about the majors here. And by the way, I was short uh, dollar yen on Wednesday uh, at, um, I, I didn't have the best price in the world. I was short right here. Let me grab my pen. I was short at 47 uh, right here on Wednesday, okay? 
shore right through through there. And I and 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 I had an order to add at one eleven eighty five, which never got triggered. Uh, but I closed it out this morning at one eleven seventeen um, because we are at the fifty percent retracement. You can see here. Let me get rid of that. And you can see we're at the fifty percent retracement currently uh, at this 111.05 level. And, and it's important support. I think it's, uh, as Steve mentioned uh, a little while ago, because I did hear some of his analysis, uh, I was going back and forth um, uh, from my computer and away from my computer, that uh, you know a, a nice clean break below this 111 level, we're probably going to be targeting 110.15, which is the 618 retracement. That, that to me is a very realistic expectation. It has been ever since we were up here at 114 of getting to mid-range. And we, we're, we're mid-range. So it, when you're shorting the US dollar Japanese yen right now versus two, three weeks ago, and, and remind you, I'm going to remind you guys, the two or three weeks ago, a lot of people didn't see what I saw. A lot of people didn't see the fact that we were at triangle resistance. They didn't. They they didn't. They they didn't believe that that we were going to roll over. And at that point in time, you know, it made sense from a risk reward perspective to be short up here. Um, you know, based on what the Nikkei was doing, based on what equities were doing, you know, so on and so forth. Now we have rolled over since then now your risk reward is not so great uh, we are for all intents and purposes we're mid-range so do but do i think the dollar yen is still going down i do i actually do i think we're going to see the lower end of this triangle and if you remember grega's uh, analysis too he was looking for this and then eventually a break out now i i don't know if we're going to get that breakout or not I, that's a little too far into the future for me but i do think that we could we can challenge the support very easily especially given the fact that we had a false breakout when you have a false breakout um the 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 likelihood of a false breakout turning into a breakdown is quite high so um we have gotten that breakdown now do we go through the support Oh, I don't know. We had a false breakdown over here. It led us to the, the move up here. Now we had a false breakout up here. Does it lead us back down here? Probably. Do we break down from there is questionable. And I think we have to just take it as it comes. Meaning, you know, if we get down towards this channel support, why are we down there? And what what is happening with gold or with silver or with uh, bonds or with equities that that would make us believe that we're actually going to break through that support. I think there's there, there has to be more than just technical analysis at that at that point that that tells us that we're going to break down. I think you got to start looking at correlations very carefully. And um, like I said, I think we could very easily get down there. Um, but Again, the risk reward is not great being on the short side of the dollar yen at this moment. Uh, you got to look for, you know, much more intraday entries. Like you can see, the the dollar yen was about as good as you get from a technical analysis, basic technical analysis perspective. We sold off. We basically came to the 50% retracement. We tested previous support. Okay which is current resistance, and then failed. That's exactly what you would expect it to do. Um, you, you could also arguably say that we, uh, here, I'll just do it like this. We failed at a downtrend line as well. So, uh, you know, everything has worked with the dollar yen as you would expect. And, and the way I look at it now is as long as we stay below this 111.40 level, it's bearish and it's bearish and we're probably going to go lower now that does that doesn't mean that we can't bounce right now or that doesn't you know that doesn't mean that that can happen it, it can bounce but um you just have to be extra careful and like i said i already pulled my trade off the table from wednesday like i said i was short like right here and i already pulled my mine off the table not for a huge amount it was like 30 some odd pips but I'm out. Now, the question is, where do I look for another entry? And I will tell you, it's not here. I'm not going to chase it lower. 
um, and then, and it could break lower. And I'm not I'm not uh, ignoring the fact that it that if it breaks lower, you know, I'll, it, it'll leave without me. And I'm very aware of that, and that can happen. Okay, so that's the dollar yen, and um, you know, like I said, I, I still think it's moving lower. I just don't now. I just I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to enter, uh, and it's not at this place right now. All right, uh, let's talk about the dollar index too. And and this this is one of my other hesitations about being you know aggressively short the dollar yen. This is the dollar index, and the dollar index is almost almost has completed a bear flag pattern. Okay, now to complete the pattern would take us down here to 92.40. All right, but but we are on the dollar index. We are at the 618 retracement. Given that it's the 618 retracement, the flag pattern is very close to completing. the The risks of a reversal around these levels are high. Now, uh, I started buying dollars uh, today. And uh, I'll talk about the cable here in a second. I'm not going to tell you, you know, everywhere else that I bought the dollar. But I, I started buying some dollars today. Now, uh, uh, one of our traders in the chat room said, oh, my God, Blake's buying dollars. What's wrong with the world? What's going on? And and I, I have to explain to to you guys that it is only counter trend. And I don't plan on being on the in, in the dollar long for too too long of a period of time. Hell. I might just get out today and take a loss. Who knows? Um, but I, I'll, I'll tell you this much that I think the dollar is due for a bounce. Do I think that the dollar is bullish from here? No, I don't. I actually think that the dollar is going to eventually break lower. But at this point, we're, we're very oversold. We completed patterns. We're at a 618. I think the risk of a dollar bounce is quite high at this point. Um, but, you know, if, if I had to imagine what, the, what I think the dollar is going to do from here, it might only do this, you know, it might only bounce and, you know, then, then resume its downtrend, something like that. I, I'm not, I'm not looking for much more than that. And, and th that's kind of like the the reason why I'm counter trend trading right now, but I'm not very aggressive. I'm not, I'm not taking aggressive stance. Now, the one currency pair that I think you guys should all be looking at is the pound. Now the pound, I had had this drawn out for the last you know, few days ever since the end of last week, uh, we're following this minor uptrend channel. But I'm more, more importantly, focused on the big triangle formation and the downtrend line that comes in around 134, uh, 134, 134.50, somewhere around here. Okay, that downtrend line. It is is basically the the bull bear line for the, uh, the 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 pound dollar. I mean, if we break through, let's just call it 134.50. So if we break through, or you know, we have it here on Forex Analytics at 134.25. But if we break through this resistance here, okay. That is going to be very bullish for the cable. Matter of fact, that's going to be so bullish for the pound that I might start buying the pound against everything. Okay, because that means that we're going to we're taking out a downtrend line from 2014. This is like pre-Brexit move. Okay, so at this at this point, um, the pound. You know, I don't mind being on the short side of the pound. But if it breaks through, you know, 130, let's just call it 134.50, you know, and, and it has to really get a daily close above that. If we get a daily close above that, the, the pound dollar could really uh, explosively or the pound could really explosively move higher, not only against the dollar, but against everything. All right. And and I think that is a that that's a big risk for the cable at this point. Um, again, I, I don't think it's going to break. It, and to get a break of of a you know a big magnitude, especially when you're going ab above a, a major trend line that, like this, I'd like to, I'd like for there to be a catalyst. Like, what is the catalyst that is driving the pound higher? You know, it would probably have to do be something with Brexit, or is the dollar going lower because of um, you know it, you know maybe the the um, 
the uh, the tax plan fails. And, and by the way, the dollar yen just broke through 111. Um, you know, is it the, the tax plan that's failing? You know, it, I would think that there has to be something that's driving the cable, uh, or, or, you know, driving the dollar lower. So at, at this stage, it, I just think it's kind of an aggressive move, but we're getting close to channel resistance and you know we might we might hit 134 maybe trip some stops above 134 and then you know come back down again and i think that's what the the cable is is up to right now and that's why i'm 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 starting to trade it on the short side here um i, I know there was a few questions but let me let me i got i got i got a i got a comment on the elephant in the room right now bitcoin um bitcoin is out of control strong we're obviously at this you know a very explosive um you know situation in in bitcoin i i got a i got an email from from a major website is like hey blake do you want to you know do you want to comment on bitcoin and and the 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 thing that i had to say to to this 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 lady is i have nothing to say about bitcoin there's absolutely nothing for me to say. It's too bullish to to say, oh, oh, it's 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 peaked here. But at the same time, I don't know where it's going. Bitcoin could go to ten thousand. It could go to twelve thousand. It could go to twenty thousand. It could have peaked today. I have no idea. But I'm not seeing any signs of a reversal. One, okay. Two, it'd be foolish for me to say, oh, the top is right here. There's nothing for me to say about that. And and three, it'd be very foolish for me to say, oh, it looks like a great short right now. So, you know, Bitcoin is one of those situations that if, it, in, in, unless you, it, unless you're in it right now to try to buy it here, it, it doesn't make any sense. But to make it, to, to be short here, doesn't make any sense either. So I, there's nothing, there's nothing for me to say about Bitcoin. Like I said, I had a major uh, website you know, approach me today and says, hey, you know, do you, do you got some comments for us about Bitcoin? I'm like, no, I don't. And I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to put my neck out there either. Same with Ethereum. Now, Ethereum, um, uh, you know, rallied out of this triangle though. And um, it, 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 it hit, you know, a 261% extension right over here. It hit, whoops, over here, it hit the 127% extension. So we're hitting some technical levels that, that make sense for Ethereum to, 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 to peak at. But um, you know, does it look bearish? No. And does it look like it's finished yet? Not to me, especially if you got Bitcoin continuing to move higher. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, um, you know, if that, if Ethereum is going to stop or any of these other, you know, coins like Litecoin, I don't know if that's going to stop either with, with, uh, with Bitcoin rallying. So anyway, I wanted to, I wanted to point out the, uh, elephant in the room because that is, it, it, it has been rallying the last several days and, and nonstop at that. Um, okay, so let's uh, let me address a couple of questions that came out that came in. Um, uh, Blake, can I, if I may, add one thing? Oh, hey, yes, hey. yes, absolutely, Stelios. Good morning. Sorry, Sorry I, I, was I was away. I was away picking up the kids comments. before. Um, um, I have a friend who came over on the weekend and uh, he got into Bitcoin a few months ago and he was saying, he's not a trader, he's, uh, he's in IT, but he doubles a little bit here and there and he goes, oh, I'm in for six months now, I've made like 50% or whatever it was, um, I, it's coming close to $10,000 Bitcoin, so I'm going to get out, you know, a big level. I said, uh, you know, my, my response was 10,000, 20,000, who the hell knows? You know, if, you, if you're in, you're up 50%, you know, great, get out, cash it in. But personally, I have no clue where it's going. And the other thing I, I wanted to say was um, the CME futures on Bitcoin, which are coming up in December. And a lot of people are saying it's going to be bad for the for Bitcoin because it's an easy way to short it, etc. That's a that's a valid point. One thing that I'm a little but, bit but, uh, but 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 wait yeah. wait just with that being said, yeah. it's but it's not. You're not that no, anybody who's trading in the futures. If they short Bitcoin, it's not shorting. You're, you're speculating that it's going to go down in price, but it's not a ca it's not a cash transaction. Yes. So they're not yes. actually holding Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, I don't know how bad it's going to be for Bitcoin. I, I I personally think it's going to be good, and I'll tell you why. 
I yeah, myself, okay. like a year ago, um, wanted to get into it. You know, I was thinking about it. I was saying, you know, this is a big thing. It's happening. It's moving. You know, maybe there's a trade here. And I looked for ways to get in and to buy Bitcoin and all that. And I got faced with all these issues like, oh, you have to really, ideally, you want to hold them in physical storage. And, oh, yeah, download really good uh, antivirus. Oh, yeah, and make copies as well and do this and that because you might get hacked. And I'm like, yeah, screw that. I'm not going to do it. It's just too complicated. But if you look at, if you take the future, you're, you know, you're dealing with the CME basically. So it, everything is so much simpler for anybody who wants to get in and just ride this bubble or whatever you want to call it. So I think people are going to go into that on the long side to try to take advantage of this thing, which is a monster without all the admin. So I, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's going to give it a boost. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and maybe, and maybe uh, you know, I, I mean, we, we, I've seen it. Still, as you and I have been in the markets pretty much the same amount of time, and, and I've seen it so often. You get a move like this, or not so often, but I've seen it enough in my career. When you get a move like this, this explosive move, there's something that's going to create a blow off top, and when it happens, it's going to be a mess. And, um, yeah. you know, may, maybe the futures is what creates it. Maybe it's, you know, what what allows for Bitcoin to go to, you know, from 10,000 to 20,000 back down to 5,000. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm just, you know, at this point, I'm just speculating. But I, I know I know I've, I've been around enough to know that I've I've missed this. I've missed this ride already. I'm not participating, and 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 it could go up. Who knows where it could go? But yeah. I'll end up missing it, and and it sucks. It's a it's a shame when that happens because I, I've 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 you know, I've done it, um, you know, many times in my career where I watch you know I remember watching crude oil you know going oh my god this thing you know here we go past a hundred there it goes one ten where it goes one twenty, you know and and I've I've been there and said well I guess I'm gonna miss it. You know, yeah. and I, I was also I also miss crude oil going from 150 to 20. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm with you. I, I'm on that boat. I've missed it. And I'm just just sitting on my hands and, and I'm, I'm OK with that. But the, the difference with crude oil and Bitcoin is or other instruments that have happened to both of us over the years is that I don't understand Bitcoin as much as I, you know, as I should in order to really be able to have a, you know, a, a complete um, opinion on it. That's why I left it alone. So that's the difference with yeah. between that and oil or, you know, sterling or whatever it is. But uh, I'm sure True. there are people out there who, who really, really know everything about about it. But uh, right. for me, if I'm not 100 percent confident, I just leave it. Well, thanks, Delius, for your for your opinion. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm going to answer a couple of questions really quick about the Pound New Zealand and Aussie New Zealand before uh, before we uh, I, I pass it over to Dale. Um, but thank you. I, I appreciate that, and and I and I and I agree with you. I don't know if uh, Bitcoin futures is going to. I don't think it's going to be a necessarily a negative for Bitcoin. I think it. I, I as well believe it's going to be uh, at least near term positive. Maybe it is long term negative. Who knows? Um, okay, really quick. Uh, I got asked. Well, we got asked. Uh, Luke asked about the pound Aussie and the Aussie New Zealand. Uh, let's take a real quick look at the pound Aussie. The pound Aussie, you know, is is um, is you know consolidating. It looks like a bull flag pattern. And and the way I view it is that we've broken a pretty major trend line. So as long as we're above this uh, 173.50 level, I think it's bullish. Um, you know, I. I but also at the same time, we, we we've got you know some pretty pretty big you know horizontal resistance that's coming into play somewhere around here, uh, uh, somewhere around there. But you know, and above there, it gets you know very bullish. The Aussie New Zealand, on the other hand, there's nothing to do with the Aussie New Zealand. Th this thing is just it's it's it, well actually it, it looks like it's breaking down at this point. Um, it, it if it breaks through this 110 level, I mean. I look at it as a failed triangle, and I tried playing this to the long side. I haven't been trading the Aussie New Zealand, but you know, I think if we get a nice close below 110, uh, we're probably going to see at least the 200-day moving average again, which will be 108 and change. I, I was uh, really, it, it caught me, matter of fact, the beginning of my quarter right here, I, I lost some pretty good money being long the Aussie New Zealand. And uh, and and it took me a while to dig out of that hole this quarter, because um, I'm I'm positive for the quarter, but I had a really this this one really hit me.
me hard because I thought this was a major breakout and uh, and it caught me off guard. So it, and I think if we get below this 110 level, you know, that that failed breakout is going to bring a bring a bit of a, a, a reversal. Um, and Brett, oh, no, Phil also asked about the Aussie New Zealand. So there you go. Uh, so Luca, Phil, hopefully that that helps you out. Um, the, the, we do have a pretty pretty full calendar this week, but uh, I'm going to have to pass it over to uh, Dale um, uh, because I know Dale has – you have an interview, Dale, right? That's correct. Andre okay. Cordoza, and maybe you guys could help me out because I'm having trouble with the hardware and pulling him out under attendees. He's not showing up, but I know he's here. Is maybe Either you or Steve could make him the presenter. Okay. What's his name? Andre Cordozo. Uh, Andre Cordozo. Okay, I see him. Uh, I'm going to make him a panelist. And so... They want to make him a presenter. He'll have charts. Okay. Uh, Andre, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, good hey, morning. Andre. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to make you presenter if you have some charts to show. Yes, I am. You're welcome. Okay, great. And then I'm going to let Dale take over from here. So you guys have a great interview. I don't want to step you. on your toes here. So thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank, thank you. Hello, Andre. Welcome to FACE. Thank you very much, Dale. And let me, let me start. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you, with this amazing group of people. Uh, I used to, to be here when I, when I can, um, and I'm sorry for my English because it's not perfect. I'm, I'm from Portugal and eventually I will have some difficulties trying to, um, to share my views. Your English uh, is better than my Portuguese. <laughs> so, Portuguese, uh, Portuguese is not a common language, of course. It's, it's, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll need to learn it before I move to Brazil. So uh, let me... Let me start here, Andre. You know, just, I, just validate I, I for me. Then. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Validate for me if you are checking my screen with my trading view chart. I, I see the harmonics on the screen. Okay. 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 It's nice. And nice. Uh, looks like it's a uh, pound kiwi. So before okay. we get to the market, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's always interesting to hear people's stories and yeah. how they ended up in this type of. Mm -hmm. uh, business as a trader and the methodology that they gravitated to. So can you tell us a little bit about your beginnings, uh, how you got involved as a trader, perhaps mm -hmm. what your first job was or who mentored you? How did it happen for you, Andre? Well, I, I started outside, as an outsider uh, from the market. So my first introduction to the markets uh, was 15, 20 years ago. Uh, I, I'm, I'm now with 38 years, um, and uh, it, it was it was one very fast and very very fast introduction to the market. Uh, a magazine, uh, an economic magazine here in Portugal, launched at that time um, a championship, a demo championship for 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 those who are starting or want to begin um, want to begin to to, to trade. And an uncle, um, as a brother, actually acting as, as a brother, uh, suggested me to participate on, on that on that championship. So I, I, I participated on that championship championship during one week, and I jumped out because I was I was an artist at that time. I was playing. I was a bass player in, in my band. I was a, ba a basketball player. I had no time to, to to spend in front of my computers at that time. We had my, I had my first computer do, during that process, so I had no interest, uh, regular interest in in the markets at that period. Obviously, I was I was a child of that period, and then, uh, but that creates me uh, what I call uh, a small. Let me guess why you you get more yeah. girls as a musician in yeah, a band yeah. and as. And, and, and I, I completely I completely avoid the market. <laughs> <laughs> those kind of, but that was my first contact with the market, curiously. And now, today, looking back, uh, I can I can understand that that triggers me some some interest later in in, in my life. So later, I, I became I became a professional related to network, and, and uh, I was a supervisor 
supervisor in the network operation center related to servers and network servers. Um, and then I fall into an unemployment, an unemployment. Uh, uh, so I, I, I lose my job at, uh, at some point. Um, like six years ago, I lost my job during uh, during during one one specific year. I can remember 2013, I believe 2014. Um, at that time, I was already involved with the market, just just trying to to, to figure out figure out how, how the market behaves. Um, and I started to to play with the market with small amounts of money. Um, and curiously, uh, I started with the, the inverted with the most common person. So most common persons will lose their money uh, when they start to to trade. Uh, actually, with me, uh, I I was a one of fortunate guy because I, I injected a small amount of money and I without without know how to, how to trade, I, I capitalized my my accounts with trading coffee. Uh, selling coffee at that, at that summer, um, but I realized I soon realized that I can't I can't keep uh, that that um, that development with, without learning the process. So, something um, something triggered my 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 curiosity to learn how the market behaves in order to to, to avoid massive losses because I. Uh, we have the internet today. We have all the information there at a distance with one click. It's not difficult for us to, to get notice that most of the people will lose their money when trading uh, without the, the proper knowledge. Um, so, okay, I so to learn later the markets. Yeah. So, uh, as you went through this process, did you try other methodologies and how did you come to? become a believer in harmonics and mm. um, were there any people that did you have a mentor? Well, I, I believe I started as any, as any other um, people starting to search for the best indicator, um, starting to search for the best technique to trade, starting to search for other people works too. Then when I when I joined the, the community on TradingView I started to realize that the, the, the amount of alternatives uh, in terms of technical approaches um, that we that we can uh, apply to our strategies to trade and, and to develop and to try to 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 develop even even a better strategy than than others. Um, but uh, I was started as as any other trying to search for the, the best indicator, uh, the pretty good indicator, the, the the stochastic, and all mix it together. And well, I I, I spent. A lot of time trying to search for the best uh, strategy to trade until I joined uh, TradingView. Then I, I, I was I, I was confronted with the harmonic patterns, and I realized that this is uh, a friendly uh, strategy that allows me to put my capital at risk with a proper uh, risk strategy uh, for a long term period. So. Uh, okay. And I, I, then I started to, to, to search for those guys who develop those those concepts, though, know, and all the merit for to, to Scott Carney, you know, I, I believe most of the people uh, know Scott Carney and his job about related to harmonic trading. Um, so I believe. How about, how about Nicola Duke? Uh, Nick is also. Yes, a yes I, I, read, I, I have I have some I have some information from from uh, not only from nuke from but I'll, I'll actually from a lot of others uh, uh, other people i have i don't know i have bill williams for fractals i have uh, darvas i have studied nicholas darvas boxes um, not related directly directly to 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 harmonic patterns but then harold gartley um, with profit in the stock market in 1935 that launched the book uh, one amazing book uh, sold by one thousand and fifteen and five hundred dollars at that at that time. Uh, I believe it's, it was similar to the to the costs. The, the book costs uh, it was similar to to um, uh, an ounce of gold. It, uh, it, no, it it was it was very expensive book, and I believe the community at that period in nineteen thirty five. Yeah, that was a lot of money during the a lot, a lot of money equivalent to two months of of uh, of work in, in the united states yeah. at that period you know, and yeah. so it was it was uh, an amazing book and 
and then we have Pesavento and, and, and Leslie. Oh, yeah, Leslie. Larry. I know Larry. I yeah, know Larry. Leslie Pesavento. Larry Pesavento is Leslie, Leslie, Leslie Joffre, is also a, a nice book from Trade What You See and some, some, some books as, uh, as reference to. And those guys uh, actually, I believe, when, when people start to, to, to search for a lot of information, people start to, to, to become confused, no? So I started very, very soon to, to get focus on, on specific people and try to follow and try to, to, to get the most valuable information just for them. Um, obviously, I have other people. I have Akil Stokes, one of the best mentors that I, I, can, I can mention here because it's, it's, it's very uh, easy to find Akil. Um, oh, yes. Yes, Akil, I know. I have scheduled yeah, for him. I, I know he, he was here already with you. I, I saw that interview. I believe it, it, it will be here. Uh, yeah, that was on FX Street in Lar. Yeah. And uh, I believe he was taught by Jason Stapleton. Jason um, Stapleton. I, I know that Scott Carney believes he invented uh, mm -hmm. harmonics and Gartley patterns. But, you know, it's interesting to me that you bring up um, that Gartley is named after mm -hmm. A market, yeah, because, uh, because a market it, it wizard. Yeah. And it how many of these fun. wizards were all around at the same time? Gann yeah. and Gartley and Elliot. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, that's very interesting that they all came around in the 30s. Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering who the new generation is going to be. <laughs> but uh, all these. I believe, I, believe, I believe the market is, is an, hybrid, uh, an hybrid market, no? And, and we should be. Uh, uh, adapted uh, to that market as soon as possible, so we, we can see I the guess, you know, the new ones. The new ones will be guys like Tom DeMarc and mm -hmm, uh, some mm -hmm. other people that have come up with different methodologies. So, mm -hmm. um, great story, interesting journey you've had, and uh, uh, you and I could maybe, you know, uh, you are you're a basketball player, but having been in the market as long as you have, mm -hmm. and people knowing my age maybe uh should we ever meet uh, we'll have to stick to shuffleboard or basketball or something right <laughs> sure. can you still get over the rim can you still uh, touch no, the rim no, I, I i have a daughter now i have i have another, <laughs> another commitment <laughs> Did you play Olympic ball? Yeah, but okay. no, I, I play it. I play it by my district, uh, by my district selection. My, okay. my not not a national team, but my okay. by, my, my my city. You know, at that period it, it was very important because you know Portugal. We have 10, 000, uh, 10 million uh, habitants. We are a very small country. Um, yeah. Well, it's it's eight hundred kilometers distance from north to south, north to south it's not difficult to to, to cross our and, and you never you never grow too old to play a base do you you still play it no 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 i i i i'm a point guard guard <laughs> I'm, I'm a point guard so oh okay but i'm talking you said you were in a band that you oh, played yes. bass. I, I play bass for, i play instruments from my six years old so oh. I, play, I, play, I play guitar i play bass i play drums i play a lot of instruments <laughs> yeah so music is harmonics too isn't it yes it is yes it is obviously okay. i can i can train without music i, I can't make my analysis without my sounds so behind so right I, I need to, to get I, as bill williams said that he needs the the cats and the the, the classic music you no know? Uh, I need my jazz and 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 and. Uh, is I that why you came? Is that your why your handle is jazz? At Trader I Jazz, so is that one of your music. favorite forms of music? You know, you know, you know that that starts as a, as a, as a, as a kid playground. No, when I joined Trading View, I, I was not not expecting to to become one of the top authors on, on inside the platform at all. Uh, it was a it was a long term process between between dedication, motivation, and sharing content, and trying to educate people, and trying to put people in the, the correct path, trying to avoid the, the most common mistakes we 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 will face at some time on the, at some period, and that work it, it's it's well people started to enjoy it and uh, to 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 enjoy yes. the, the work and then yes, I read I, I read on your website you're quite prolific on trading view yeah. That. Yeah. Are you the number one poster on Trading View? Uh, I don't know. I, I know. I I I, I reduce it or decrease it too uh, too much. Uh, my my posts since I started to to work inside the area in, inside the area in other in other 
in other category, not just as, a, as an analyst of the trader. I started to provide also for those who don't have time to to search for opportunities. Okay, I started. So you you provided more. Yeah, you had a yeah, um, yeah, and, and, and then I decreased it. My now, my policy now, now yeah. you don't. For, now you only do it to tease people to join your service. No, I, I actually not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, that that is uh, the main objective. No, not daily. You have a business too. You you have you you know how these things work. You you you, you need we need people. Actually, I I need people to get focused and to be disciplined to myself. Uh, the best way to keep disciplined is to to keep providing the best information that I can in order to. I'm to, not to against avoid the same making a living with yeah. your knowledge. I, I, yeah. I'm all for it. So uh, some people get defensive about it. They think that you know because of one time they yeah. were providing free analysis mm -hmm. that is yeah. something curious to our profession. Uh, people don't hesitate to pay their accounts mm -hmm. their lawyer. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. But when it comes to making a forecast or teaching people how to trade mm -hmm. a very difficult endeavor, um, uh, there's some hesitancy to pay people because there is so yeah, much because, people, yeah, because people don't understand the time that you need to dedicate to to that's true. the effort uh, yeah so how don't. many years did it take you to become a yes i know i, I know already that, trader yeah to become a profitable trader let me say that let me put the things like this i i only started to trade my real accounts uh, in about one one year one year one year and two months i still in profit but I, I'm facing my, my first uh, major drawdown. So I'm, I'm trying to recover in my personal account. I'm trying to recover from my, my first drawdown. Um, usually uh, it, it will happen because we trade in sequences. No, we trade good sequences and we trade bad sequences of trades. Uh, so I believe I'm crossing now my, my I'm, I'm, I'm trying to break the, the, the bearish, the bearish uh, correction well, you know what, of my drawdown. Thank you yeah. for your transparency. Very few people come in here and mm -hmm. admit they're going through a drawdown period. So oh, no, no, it's, yeah, I face I face drawdowns all the time, but this yeah. this was a major one That's because right. I, I I started to 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 provide signals and I started to trade at the same time, and the, during that period I started to provide a lot of signals and well, at some point I, I lose my I lost my my. Time. I agree yeah. that people do all the time, Andre. What I'm saying yeah. is people rarely are transparent and talk about it, hmm. right? I mean, you're you're on Twitter a lot. Yeah. I think people choke on the words, I don't know and I was wrong. You don't see that a lot on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So, no, uh, I, I know perfectly when I was wrong, no? Yeah. Uh, especially because I trade harmonics and I know when the harmonic will fail. So when the, the harmonic fails, I, I, I'm jumping out from, from that trade automatically. So I don't think okay, so, it was hope, so. So uh, let's talk about your comeback with some mm -hmm. instruments that we have up here, Pound Kiwi, and mm -hmm. tell us what you're seeing here and uh, what you're looking for. Um, it looks like you had, you know, some type of was that a guard lead? So or a I, I have this. This um, is this on Pound Pound Kiwi. This is yeah. the the eventual, uh, not the eventual one because this is. This is forged already. We have uh, we had all, already engaged this this trade at 224 extension. This is the sharp pattern, and this is the okay. most basic um, the most basic configuration for the sharp pattern. So the sharp pattern can uh, complete at 161 extension from this previous uh, wave from from this last swing, um, okay. extended 161 or at 224. I like to trade them at 224 for uh, for counter trend. For this this specific trade for a counter trend, so this is a bullish okay. momentum, as you can see. You know, I believe you are already you have already mentioned anything, that. Is there anything harmonic with your green box that you see there? To me, I mean, as a conventional this, this one? technician, to me it looks like it's just sideways. Um, yes, this, this is just yeah. This is just a sideways, and the market actually can 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 print highs. No, the market can correct enter enter in, into into a corrective momentum. And then prints prints new eyes, but we have our targets at Fibonacci, so I, I trade the Fibonacci levels. I since the market, as soon as the market touches my 38% retracement, I will break even my position. So I have no uh, no issues if the market goes uh, above my entry point. I will cut so my position also. Uh, so you're looking to buy a buy a retracement here now. 
I'm, I do not buy a retracement because I have a major um, a major view for for um, pound versus dollar. Um, that, as you can see, at the same time as pound Kiwi is is consolidating um, in the corrective structure, we have pound versus dollar uh, yes. feeling feeling less the, the less strength from the dollar now. Actually, I, I don't believe this is the strength of uh, the pound, but yes, the, the the lack of strength on dollar, because I actually uh, they are all some kind of correlated. No, they, I believe you have talking talk about that uh, earlier with uh, with um, Steve or uh, uh, Blake. I, I believe it was Blake um, trying to catch the attention for the eventual correlation. At some point between between our between the majors and dollar and eventually gold, we can mix gold in, the, in that process too. Um, I am expecting pound to fall in 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 a major, let's say in the weekly in the weekly chart. So I, I am expecting somehow and uh, somewhere the price to break this this structure to print new lie or at least to come to test the previous lows. This is just an expectation and I don't trade those expectations but based on that thought I can try to search for opportunities to sell the market and my next opportunity to sell the market it will be presented with another um, harmonic pattern this one a 161.8 uh, extension it will be seen with Blake level, Blake's level. I believe. I believe it's somewhere. Uh, I, I, I'm not taking um, note. Four and a half and the, five. The specific, the specific um, price. But well, at this point, and that's why I don't. Um, and, and I'm sorry, my my. Let's say my ignorance because I, I don't train fundamentals. I, I completely ignore the I completely ignore the calendar. I okay, okay. I avoid to to engage the market at that specific moment moment. But I completely ignore the the, the, the fundamental approach. To okay, you know, let me ask you this: You trade yeah. in both positions on red event days, like central banks, and then. Uh, yes, yeah, so if, if uh, let let me put the thing like this, Dale. If I if I have a, a very strong a very strong pattern to trade, and the, the at the same time a news event to to happen, I will trade the, the, the I can trade the, the 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 pattern. Okay, because if there's no news event i will trade the pattern even though so i just need to to, to set my 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 proper risk strategy behind the, behind the harmonic and to trade it okay okay so it's not so simple as this because i have i have my criteria too i have specific time frame to trade i have specific tra pairs to trade i i well I, I trade below my specific percentage of risk of risk per trade i have a maximum risk for for, for, for my account so i have all uh, the set when I when I catch or when I can find a, a setup that allows me to, to to set my strategy to apply my strategy to trade it, I will trade it even if I have my, my if I have my uh, some some news events uh, happening at that time. Um, I have no issues to to engage uh, an advanced pattern uh, above the, the the news events at all. Okay. If, if so, uh, on your bias is uh, looking for shorting opportunities at the completion on, on, yeah, of this on, rally in pound. Anything else? Another instrument that you may have a view going no, I, to the I, end of the year? I've already. Uh, I'm already involved with this eventual um, Aussie uh, eventual reversal. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting the the, the uh, Aussie to somehow to achieve at, at least to achieve my 38% retracement at 0, 0, 0.75 no 0, okay. 0.75 this is my first target previous structure lows you let me clear this harmonic so how do you handle it it looks like uh, your pattern would have stopped at the 161.8 yeah, but there was one more jiggle to the yeah. downside um, forced, forced with divergence no I believe oh yeah there was yeah, we have a powerful divergence here. I was expecting the market to print uh, the shark pattern between the 161 and 224. And okay. somewhere inside this zone, I need to search for for the behavior that forces my trade. So I have, I have our, our I believe you trade also, uh, as a reversal trader, you trade also divergence on, on your sharks. Yeah. 
So yeah. we have here a powerful one. So why not to take advantage? So do you, do you have a harmonic pattern to the upside that you might be anticipating in Aussie? Yeah. To take it up there, or is it too yeah. early to come up with one? I, I believe uh, it can it can create somehow some kind of, of consolidation here at this period yeah. because we are we are trading below the previous structure, the most recent previous structure. I believe it can feel that pressure here. I, actually, we are now. In the two hour charts, we are now feeling that same pressure. Let me try to put that chart conveniently. We are trading above the this initial, let's say the initial the initial trend now adjusted to the to the previous and most recent one. So we have now this this um, okay. this structure. Uh, we have also marked the some somehow indicating a, a net and shoulder in in momentum. No, we have some net and shoulder momentum, not in on on price, but that cannot actually provide us some 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 guidance. So the the price can come to test this this trend line. So, but I, this is just expectations. David. I, I don't trade those 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 price actions. I don't expect the price to come to test this trend line to engage the market. I, I expect the market to print somehow some kind of advanced pattern. And if there's an advanced pattern to trade, I will trade. So what swing uh, I will search for, and I, I, I know you have only usually half an hour for these interviews. I will try to be very, very fast uh, on my on my approach. So I, what I search in, when I look into my, my chart, into, into the charts, is these previous swings, um, these V shapes, uh, at eyes of the structure. So I then I measure this, those 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 structures and those who are familiar with harmonic trading already know which level I am trying to search for. I will try to search for the shark at point C. This is a, an extension from this previous swing between closing or touching the third the 113, 127 extension, and then the market needs to fall into the 161 extension to provide me at least one first by opportunity. So here, I, 161, if the market breaks this structure above, obviously, I'm holding my buy position. So, but if the market violates this structure, and if the market somehow prints the 161, 224, come to test the previous lows, it can provide us a nice, a nice opportunity. We can also search for confluence between our Fibonacci levels and yes. try to get this, uh, okay. the, so the more evidence you have, the more compelling the trade. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if yeah. your bids sure. and your extensions come together. Yeah, all the time, all the time. I, I need, I need to, I need to get those conference, those cluster boxes, and uh, we can add a lot of, uh, a lot of tools. We can add uh, Nicholas Darvis boxes in, in uh, to, 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 well, to have notions where the price came, where the price may, may, may may stop no we have usually yeah. darvis boxes tells you the market should come to test the 50 percent percent of the previous consolidation period so let's let's put things easily like this we can expect the price to, to come to test the previous darvis box of consolidation at 50 well, why don't we do this on a great one you show your website and so mm -hmm. uh, uh Listeners and viewers that are hearing you live, and then people who watch the sure. video will know how to find you. Of course, this is uh, I believe you already familiar with, but this is just my private uh, or personal website. This is just a way to contact me, and there's a few a few contacts uh, there. There's also my subscription tradingjazz.com. But this is just a way to contact me. I, I share some some performance from my 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 signals to just related to my signals, just not my personal account because as I told you, I don't I don't trade all my signals. Um, I also make analysis by request, and then if I found somehow in, interesting to share that analysis into my my subscribers, I will share that information. But this is just information related to my um, my signals. But the website is just a way to contact me. Actually, we have the, the socials, the trading view, and uh, Facebook and Twitter. Most of the times, I am also online uh, on those platforms in order to to to, to be contacted from from the people. And trading view, obviously, um, I have I have 
24 educational charts for those who are starting to trade, uh, charts related to um, harmonic trading, double top definitions, the 2618 setup, how to trade it, um, basic movements on Elliott uh, waves. Um, well, and a lot of information for those who are starting and somehow they are lost in, inside. You're a great zone. resource. Huh? You're a great resource, Andre. No, I, I, uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the objective, no? It's to share yeah. uh, among the community and to, to grow uh, together. And, and To pay it forward. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I really want to thank you for coming today to edify our thank community. Thank you, too. Thank you, too, for, for having me. It's a pleasure meeting you, speaking thank with you. you, and and I now call you, like many others, my trading <laughs> one and brother. I hope thank you. Thank you very much, then. I really appreciate it. Draw down. You're going mm -hmm. through uh, uh, is temporal as possible, and yeah. that you, it's not how you start the race; it's how you finish it. But yeah, you finish it exactly. I completely so, agree. And and very 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 thank you very much for having me here. And and thank you to Blake and and to Steve. Amazing amazing analysis they they, they have done and constantly uh, and the consistency is is is, is crucial. No, I believe. Uh, you all understand the, the, the consistency of our analysis, and I really appreciate your your effort and and not the effort, but all the the concept that you are trying to develop here on Face Project. Um, well, it's amazing, and it's it's actually well. It's, on be, it, on it, behalf of the team, uh, we're humbled and we thank, thank you. you. And thank you very uh, much. Good hunting the rest of the week, the rest of the you year, too. and let's get back together in yeah, 2018. I'm great. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. All the best for all of you. Thank you. All right, everyone. That's Andre Cordoza. You can find him at trading underscore jazz and his website's www.traderjazzfx.com. See everyone tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. Good hunting the rest of the day. And remember, uh, it's one month free if you uh, subscribe today. You get one free month if you purchase one month. So good hunting, everyone. See you tomorrow. And remember, most of all, and I know Andre would agree with me, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Money comes sure. and goes. Time is gone forever. Make it count. Thank you, Andre. Thank you.